Today, I will show three ways to solve partition coefficient problems. In order to solve this question, let's begin by first drawing a diagram. So here we have a diagram of a separatory funnel, and inside the separatory funnel, we have water and methylene chloride, or dichloromethane. Inside the water layer, we have caffeine that's been dissolved in it, and we're going to use methylene chloride to extract the caffeine from water. So the caffeine is going to distribute itself between the two layers, and some of the caffeine is going to remain in the water layer, but most of it is going to be distributing itself into the methylene chloride layer. And this is because caffeine is more soluble inside of methylene chloride, and I'll explain why that is momentarily. So now that we know that caffeine reaches an equilibrium, we can write in the reaction equation as follows, where the concentration of caffeine in solvent 1 is in equilibrium with the concentration of caffeine in solvent 2. The next thing we can do is we can write the partition coefficient or the distribution coefficient, and we symbolize that with the symbol K sub D or KD, and we set that equal to the concentration of the solute or in this case caffeine, in dichloromethane, and we divide that by the concentration of the caffeine in water. This is very similar to when you set up equilibrium coefficients or equilibrium constants when you're solving for your Ka, your Kb, when you're dealing with acids and bases. So we were given here that the distribution coefficient is 4.6 between methylene chloride and water. So doing very little math here, we can substitute in that value, and we get that 4.6 is equal to C2 over C1. We can go ahead and cross multiply, and we get that 4.6 times C sub 1 is equal to C sub 2. What this means is that caffeine is 4.6 times more soluble in methylene chloride than it is in water. So this proves that caffeine is going to go into the methylene chloride layer. So we want to calculate the total amount of caffeine that can be extracted into three portions of methylene chloride. So we can use the partition coefficient to do just that. Recall that the partition coefficient is equal to the concentration of caffeine in solvent 2, which is methylene chloride, and you divide that by the concentration of caffeine in solvent 1, which is water. And also recall that a concentration is simply a mass divided by the volume. So we can go ahead and further express this, where the concentration of caffeine in dichloromethane is simply x grams divided by 2 milliliters. But what about the concentration of caffeine in water? Well, we know that there's going to be less caffeine in the water layer because most of it is going to be extracted in methylene chloride. We can express that as 0 0.070 minus x sub 1. We can go ahead and get rid of most of these words so that we can focus more on the numbers right here. So we get that 4.6 is equal to x sub 1 divided by 2 divided by 0 0.070 minus x sub 1 divided by 4. We can go ahead and rearrange that and we get the following. We can go ahead and reduce this and simplify and we get 4.6 is equal to 2 times x sub 1 divided by 0 0.070 minus x sub 1. We can go ahead and cross multiply and divide and we get x sub 1 is equal to 0 0.049 grams. And this is the amount of caffeine that has been extracted by dichloromethane. So just to summarize, we calculated that after the first extraction, we recovered or we extracted 49 milligrams of caffeine from the water layer. Now, when we go ahead and do the second extraction, we need to change our numbers up a little bit. We no longer have 70 milligrams of caffeine in the water layer. What do we have instead? Well, if we take 49 milligrams and we subtract that away from 70 milligrams, we get 
0.021 grams of caffeine that's been left behind in the water layer. So 21 milligrams is the new value that we will use instead of this 0 0.070. So when we go ahead and calculate the amount that's been extracted after the second extraction, we have to substitute in that value. So now instead of 70 milligrams, we now have 21 milligrams. When we solve for X sub two, we get 0 0.015 grams. And this is the amount of caffeine that's been extracted by dichloromethane. And once more, we have to plug in that value for X sub two right here. And we have to subtract that away from 21 milligrams. And this gives us 0 0.00 six grams or six milligrams of caffeine left in the water layer. And finally, when we calculate the amount after the third extraction, we get 42 milligrams of caffeine that was extracted by methylene chloride. The next step is to take the sum of all those x values that we found. So we'll add x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3 with one another. And this gives us a total of 0 0.068 grams or 68 milligrams and that is the amount of caffeine that's been extracted by methylene chloride. The converse of that, so if we subtract 68 milligrams from 70 milligrams, we would find that we only have 2 milligrams of caffeine left in the water layer. And one final way of thinking about this is if you take 68 milligrams divided by 70 milligrams, multiply that by 100, you find that you had 97% of caffeine that was extracted by methylene chloride. This piece of information is useful when we use a different method to solve this type of question. Another way of approaching this problem is as follows. In this method, we want to find how much caffeine is left in the water layer. This is very similar to the first method I showed you, except it's as if we flipped our numerator and denominator. But keep in mind, everything is still the same. Uh, dichloromethane is still in the numerator, water is in the denominator, and then the volumes are exactly the same. The only difference is the mass right here. In this way of approaching it, we're trying to calculate how much is left in the water layer. So when we go ahead and solve for x sub 1, we get 21 milligrams, and this is the amount of caffeine that's left in the water layer. If we go ahead and plug in x sub 1 in the numerator right here, we would get that 70 milligrams minus 21 milligrams is equal to 49 milligrams. And this would be the amount of caffeine that was extracted by methylene chloride. However, we're going to be focusing our attention on the 21 milligrams. This is just another way of thinking because if you do plug in this value, this also tells you the amount that was extracted. Very similar to the first method. So when we continue solving for the successive extractions, we have to use the previous value. So remember that we found that there was 21 milligrams of caffeine left in water. So therefore, we have to change that value right here. So it went from 70 milligrams, and now it's 21 milligrams. So when we solve for x sub 2, we get 6.4 milligrams of caffeine left in the water layer. Once again, we use this value, and we change it right here. Finally, we get x sub 3 is equal to 0.0019 grams, or 1.9 milligrams, and that's the amount of caffeine that's left in water after the third extraction. So this is where this method is a little bit different from the first one. Now that we have this x sub 3 value, this is the final amount that's left in water. So if we want to calculate how much has been extracted by methylene chloride, you have to subtract that away from 70 milligrams. So if we do 70 milligrams minus 1.9 milligrams, we get 0 0.068 grams or 68 milligrams. And that is the amount that's been extracted by dichloromethane. Once again, you can divide that amount by the original amount, and you'll find that 97% of caffeine was extracted by methylene chloride. 
The third approach to solving this type of question is to derive a formula that we can use. Now recall that the partition coefficient can also be expressed now recall that the partition coefficient is equal to the concentration of the solute, which I represent with the letter S, the concentration of the solute in solvent 2 divided by the concentration of the solute in solvent 1. So the solute here is caffeine, solvent 2 is methylene chloride, and solvent 1 is water. So if we expand on that idea, what exactly is the concentration found in each layer? So once again, concentration is a mass divided by a volume, but you don't have all of the mass concentrated in one area. Once you start extracting, caffeine is going to distribute itself between both layers. So a fraction of the mass will be found in water. So we can represent that by this expression right here. So Q times M divided by V1. V1 is our volume, M is our mass, and Q is simply a part or a fraction. So to clarify, if we have 70 grams of caffeine in water, but we know that's going to distribute itself between both layers. So Q can be one half, it can be one third, it can be 0.25, and so on. So this takes into account the fraction of caffeine that's going to be left behind in water. And we can go ahead and apply the same thing for the amount that'll be left in methylene chloride. And we can do that by taking one minus Q. And this makes sense because if 25% of caffeine is left in water, that means 75% must be left in methylene chloride. We can go ahead and cancel the masses in both the numerator and the denominator. And we get this expression right here. We get that K sub D is equal to one minus Q divided by V2 multiplied by V1 divided by Q. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to solve for Q and you can go ahead and look over the algebra right here. But what happens is you get Q is equal to V sub one divided by V sub one plus the partition coefficient multiplied by V sub two. And just to reiterate, Q is the fraction of solute in solvent one after one extraction. But what if we did multiple extractions? We can still use the same formula. The only difference is we need to raise it to the nth power. So Q to the nth is the fraction of solute in solvent one after n extractions. And this is assuming that V sub two is constant. So this means that each time you do an extraction, you're using the same amount. So in this question here, it says we're going to extract three times with two milliliter portions of methylene chloride. So let's go ahead and use this equation and apply it to this question right here. So we're doing three extractions. So that will be our N value. So N is equal to three. V sub one, so our first volume is the volume of water. So that's four mils. Our partition coefficient was given here, and that is 4.6. And we multiply that by the second volume so this is the volume of methylene chloride, and we're using two milliliter portions. So V sub two is two mils. And when we go ahead and solve that, we get this decimal answer. We get 0 0.028. So what is the meaning of this value? 0 0.028, you can multiply that by 100, and this will give you a percentage value. Because recall that Q is simply a fraction. And any time you take a fraction, it's also a decimal. You multiply that by 100, you can get a percentage. So in other words, 2.8% of caffeine is left behind in the water layer. But what about the amount that was extracted? So if I took 100%, subtract 2.8%, I get 97.2%. And recall that 97% was the value that we had calculated from the previous methods 
So now if we take 97.2% of the original mass, which was 70 milligrams, we get 0 0.068 or 68 milligrams. And this is the amount extracted by dichloromethane. So now that I've introduced and shown how to use the three ways of solving partition coefficient questions, let's do two more examples. So we have a question here that says the distribution coefficient of compound X in water and methylene chloride is two. You're given a solution of X in water, which is six grams in 10 milliliters that you extracted twice with methylene chloride each time with 10 milliliters. You then evaporated the methylene chloride layers. Calculate the ideal recovery amount of X. So let's start off using the first method. And the first method is attempting to directly find the amount that was extracted by methylene chloride. So remember that we need to use our partition coefficient. So we, that's the concentration of our solute in solvent 2 divided by the concentration of our solute in solvent 1. So in this case, we know that our partition coefficient is equal to 2. So 2 is equal to x sub 1 divided by 10 milliliters of dichloromethane. And we were given that we originally had 6 grams of solution X. We had 6 grams of compound X in water, so we would do 6 minus X because this is the amount that we're losing that's being extracted into dichloromethane, and we divide that by 10 milliliters of water. We go ahead and solve, and we get that X sub 1 is equal to 4 grams, and this is the amount that was extracted by methylene chloride. So that's the first extraction, and remember that we don't use that 4 grams. We have to subtract that away from 6, because now we only have 2 grams of compound X that's left in the water layer. So notice here, when I do the calculation for the second extraction, I had to change this number from 6 to 2. And when we calculate that, we get that X sub 2 is equal to 1.33 grams. And this is the amount that was extracted by dichloromethane. So we have to add X sub 1 and X sub 2. And we get that the total amount extracted, or the ideal recovery amount, was 5.33 grams. So let's go ahead and solve it using the second approach. And just like the first approach, we need to use the partition coefficient and we need to calculate the concentrations in both layers. This time, we're directly calculating the amount that's left behind in the water layer. So in this case, we put x sub 1 in the denominator and we have to do 6 minus x sub 1 in the numerator. When we solve for x sub 1, we get 2 grams of compound X is left behind in the water layer. And remember, this is the number that we need to use when we start doing the second calculation of the second extraction. So we change this number from 6 to 2. And when we solve for X sub 2, we get 0.67 grams of compound X left in the water layer. So this is the final amount that's been left behind after two extractions. So we can subtract that from the original amount, which was six grams, and we would get 5.33 grams. And this is the amount that was extracted by methylene chloride. The third way is perhaps the easiest way. So again, we just use our formula and we just plug in for these values right here. We know that we're doing two extractions, so n is equal to two. We know that the volume is 10 mils for water and the volume of methylene chloride is 10 as well. And our partition coefficient is two. This gives us one over nine. And we can go ahead and subtract this value from one and we get eight ninths. We can go ahead and multiply this by six grams and this gives us 5.33 grams of compound X that was extracted by methylene chloride. Let's say we have a different question like this one. Let's go ahead and use the first method to calculate the ideal recovery amount of X. So when we solve for the first extraction, we know that our KD in this case is 10, and we're trying to solve for the amount that was extracted by the ether. So X sub one is in our, in our numerator, and we have 50 minus X sub one in our denominator. When we solve for X sub one, we get 41.7 milligrams. This is the amount extracted by ether. 
And this is not the value that we use when we do our second calculation. We need to subtract that from 50 so that we get 8.3 because this is the new amount that's left after the first extraction. So when we go ahead and solve for x sub 2, we get 6.9 milligrams, and that's the amount that was extracted by ether after the second extraction. Once again, this is not the value you use. You have to subtract that from 8.3. This gives you a value of 1.4 milligrams, and this is the amount of compound X left after two extractions. So when you solve for the third extraction, you get that X sub 3 is equal to 1.2 milligrams. Once again, combine X sub 1, X sub 2, and X sub 3 to get a total extraction of 49.8 milligrams. Calculating the amount recovered using the second method is as follows. Once again, we switch x sub 1 and we put in the denominator. 50 minus x sub 1, we put in the numerator. Keep in mind that we're trying to solve for the amount that's going to be left in the water layer. So we get that x sub 1 is equal to 8.3. 8.3 milligrams is the amount of compound x that is left in the water layer. We use this value when we start doing our second calculation because now we have 8.3 that's left instead of 50. We solve for x sub 2, we get 1.4 milligrams. This is the amount of compound x that's left in the water layer. Again, you use this value when you calculate the third extraction because now you have 1.4 milligrams left in the water layer. You calculate the amount left after the third extraction, and you get 0.23 milligrams of compound X left in water. So this is the final amount that's left behind after three extractions. In order to calculate how much was extracted, you take this value and subtract it from the original mass. 50 milligrams minus 0.23 milligrams is equal to 49.8 milligrams. And this is the amount that was extracted by methylene chloride. And this is the amount that was extracted by diethyl ether. When you calculate using the formula, we have to substitute in the values. We know that N is equal to 3 because we do three extractions. The volume of solvent 1 is 1 milliliter. The partition coefficient is 10 and the volume of, sol of solvent 2 and the volume of solvent 2 is 0.5 milliliters. And when we solve for that, we get 0 0.0046. We can subtract that from 1 and we get 0.9954. So in other words, this is 99.5%. So we take 99.5% of 50, and when we go ahead and do the math, we get 49.8 milligrams. And this is the amount that was extracted by diethyl ether. So I hope after going over three example problems and walking through it step by step, that you have a clearer understanding of how to approach and how to think about these types of questions. So now that we've gone through three example questions, I hope you have a clearer and better understanding of how to approach and solve these types of questions using three different ways. And to summarize, I have written right here the different purposes of each method. So method number one will tell you how much solute has been extracted by solvent two. Method number two tells you how much solute is left in solvent one. Method number three tells you the fraction of solute in solvent one. And remember, once you have that fraction, you can multiply that by the original mass in order to get the amount that's left in water or the amount that has been extracted. And just some extra pieces of information. Whenever you have a partition coefficient that's greater than one, the solute prefers to be in solvent two. In other words, Solvent 2 is the solvent that was used for extraction. However, when you have a partition coefficient that's less than 1, the solute prefers to be in solvent 1. I hope that helps, and thank you for watching.